Often we give a pattern to describe what happens when we multiply with negative numbers, and we should say that um, students often look at this pattern, and let's just look at it for example here, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So let's say we've agreed that this makes sense, and then we can make a pattern where we keep the first factor constant, and we decrease the second factor by 1 each time. And, and the reason we set this pattern up is to establish that it makes sense for negative 4 times negative 1 and continuing this pattern for it to equal positive values. And this pattern shows us this because if you look at the products, they're going up by 4 each time. And when we reach this equation right here, using the pattern and our understanding of positive or of, of the negative times positive results, we can conclude that a negative times a negative is a positive. The issue here is that many students often say, well, here if the pattern is going up by 4 each time, with the product is going up by 4 by 4, when we reach 0, it should go back down by 4 and become a negative value. And then the response is to say, hey, that's, that's wrong. Don't do that. That's not correct. But in reality, um, there's no reason here in this pattern to um, say that it has to keep going, right? Uh, we know that the pattern is going up by 4, the product is going up by 4, but why can't 0 be a turning point? And uh, when a student tells us that the answer based on this pattern could still be negative, first of all, we should not shut them down. That's, that's actually correct. Right? How do we know the pattern keeps going? Um, so that's one issue I have with this, this pattern right here, that it encourages us to assume that a pattern will continue when it may not actually do so. So how can we convince ourselves and how can we convince students that a negative number times another negative number gives us a positive result? Why does this make sense? And, and the patterns that we use aren't necessarily wrong, but they, they require us to make an assumption that a pattern continues. So I would like a more concrete way to analyze this, and to do that, I'm going to use the distributive property. And if you recall, the distributive property just tells us uh, how we can break apart numbers and multiply and distribute numbers without changing the value of our product. And in short, if we had, let's say, a times b plus c, that's like having what? Well, a times b plus a times c. Which is just saying that when you're multiplying b and c and a, you have a choice where you can add b and c first and then multiply. Or multiply a by the two parts, by b and c, and then add them up. And this won't affect your answer. These two things are equivalent. And this is something we use all the time when multiplying, even though we might not formally write it this way. So, so this property will break if this rule does not work. And that's a fun thing to look at. So if a negative times a negative is not positive, if a negative times a negative is not positive, then the distributive property, I'll put dp for distributive property, breaks, it no longer works. Uh, and let's look at how. Let's assume that a negative times a negative, so we're going to assume that a negative times a negative is now negative. So we've changed it. Instead of this rule existing where two negatives multiply to make a positive, we're saying they make a negative. When that happens, you can no longer use the distributive property. Why? Well, let's say we have negative 1 times something simple like 0. This is the same thing as negative 1 times 1 plus negative 1. All I'm saying there is that 0 is the same thing as 1 and its opposite. So negative 1 times 0 is the same thing as negative 1 times the sum of two opposites, which is still 0. I'm just saying that these two expressions are equivalent. So on the left side of the equation here, multiplying negative 1 1 by 0, we get 0. And then on the right side of the equation, we distribute. We try and use the property. So we have negative 1 times 1, and that's negative 1. And we're adding that to what? Well, we already distributed this. So now we're going to distribute this. Negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1. And what does that equal? Well, we assume this new rule that says two negatives equal a negative. 
So negative 1 times negative 1 is still negative 1. Plus negative 1, we're saying that should equal 0, but it doesn't, right? Because this, in fact, if I rewrite it over here, we're saying now 0 equals negative 2. And that is not an acceptable conclusion because 0 does not equal negative 2. So when we use the rule that two negatives multiply to make a negative, we get weird stuff happening. If we try and multiply, if we try and use a distributive property, we start having a number system where 0 equals negative 2, and that's not true. And we can keep going with this. We can, we can keep messing with it and show that 0 equals other numbers. So for example, let's say I have negative 2 times 0. Well, that's going to be what? Well, equal to negative 2, oops, negative 2, times, and we can choose any opposites to write in here. Let's stick with 1 and negative 1. Because any two opposite numbers, um, two numbers have the same absolute value but are on different sides of 0, add up to 0. So we can really mess around with this and get all kinds of numbers equal to 0. So here, this is 0. Over here, we try and multiply and distribute. We get negative 2 times 1 plus, and again, I'm just distributing this negative 2, plus negative 2 times negative 1. And what does this equal? Well, negative 2 times 1 is, is negative 2, plus negative 2 times negative 1, with our new rule, that would be negative 2. And that's negative 4. And now we're saying that negative 4 equals 0, and that doesn't make sense. So instead, we choose a rule that does make sense, that does work nicely. Let's just go over how that might work. So negative 2 times 0 equals negative 2 times 1 plus negative 1. And here, I'm going to clarify this. On this side, we're saying, look what happens when a negative times a negative is a negative. It's terrible, right? We can't use the distributive property. But here on this side, we're saying, well, let's say a negative times a negative is a positive. Is that OK? Well, here we get 0 equals, using the distributive property, we get negative 2 plus what? Well, now negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0. So when we allow two negatives to multiply to make a positive, we get answers that make sense. And so that might be a really great and insightful way of looking at why negative multiplication works the way it does. It has to, right? It has to fit our number system. We could try and create another number system that allows these weird properties, and that might have a great application. But we're not trying to do that here. We're trying to create rules that work within the number system that we use every day. And this rule makes the most sense. And I think they, that offers us a deeper insight than any, any string or pattern could ever do. All right, hope that helped.